Okay, recutting the action threads using this system is deceptively simple. Basically, every tap has got a center in the end, both ends actually, that they're ground with. When they regrind them or resharpen them, they use this center to line everything up. Your action mandrels will have a center cut into them as well when you make them. You can either grind them or turn them. The center on the mandrel fits the center on the tap. And they're held together by the tailstock and the headstock of your machine. The headstock has to be locked solid. By locking it solid, these taps become single point cutters. They may only cut on one uh, side of the tap because everything always has misalignment. It doesn't matter how perfect it is, it's going to have misalignment. Um, so it doesn't matter whether the tap is perfectly straight or whether the bar is perfectly straight. As long as the action is running up the bar onto a tap that's held solid, it's always going to cut a perfectly parallel thread inside your receiver. The idea behind this is you work up in half thou increments. The downside to that, you have to buy all the taps and they're about $200 a piece. I had mine ground by Regal Victor Machine in the United States did them for me. Basically once you're set up, you get a mandrel that fits your action body closely. I've got, you know, dozens of these mandrels that are all different sizes. I turn them as I need them. And then I put them back into inventory and use them as they come up. So basically, all you have to do with this system, you slide the action onto the mandrel. And I've made this collet on the outside. That I can use a wrench on it without marring up the receiver. Basically you run the two pieces together, tighten up your tailstock. You don't want a lot of force on this bar. You can bend it if you put too much force on it. So just nice and snug with your tailstock. Then throw a little sulfur oil or wax, whichever you'd like. Wax works very well on stainless steel, just regular tree wax, the same you put on your gun stocks. Put it on the tap. Start the tap. You always start at the smallest and you'll feel it. A lot of times it'll be jerky. This is my handy wrench I made, don't laugh, it works. When I run them up, I sort of work the tap in. The action will have hard spots in it. All of the uh, thin areas of the receiver during heat treatment, they'll get harder than the thick areas of the receiver where the recoil lugs are located. Those areas are going to be soft. Conventional cutting with a single point cutter and a boring bar doesn't work that well because the cutter tends to, to bounce out when it hits these hard areas and it tends to dive in when it hits the soft areas and that's sort of exactly why the threads are screwed up to begin with. Remington tried to cut them all at once with their tapping heads and of course they dove in the soft areas and they pushed away in the hard areas. Basically what you do, you work it up and the first cut is with an H4 tap which is a full thousandth of an inch over the standard Remington threads. And the action has to go straight up the tap. There's nothing it can do. The mandrel fits the action really closely. The action is locked solid in an ER collet. It can't move. 
The center on the bar is locked into the center on the tap. There's no flex in the system. It's really, really, really short. And basically you keep going until you hit the end. Okay, we've come to the end of the thread. We're going to back it off. And at this point, we would take the whole thing down, pull the tap out of the collet, put in the next size tap, and repeat the process. And what I generally do is keep repeating until I get about 80% cleanup on the threads. I don't want to recut all of the threads, there's no point in it. All I want to do is take off all the high spots and that'll let the barrel screw straight down inside. Okay, now we've gone in with an H4 tap. Remington cuts these to H2 which is basically a thousandth of an inch over spec. Uh, an H4 tap is two thousandths of an inch. Each H is a half thou. And you can see in the area of the thread that we're looking at, it hasn't been touched. Now as we rotate the receiver, you can see it's starting just now to get a little shinier. Now here is where the tap is cut. And what we're looking at here is the bottom of the receiver where it's thin and soft. And it's cut all out of way. And if we turn it around and we can see just by going up one thousandth of an inch, and here it's dirty again, we've pretty much recut half of the threads. This is this kind of work is very hard to do with a single point tool uh, in the headstock of the machine. It's almost impossible. You can't cut in half thou or one thou increments. Taps can do that. And you can work the tap back and forth like you saw me do. Probably if we go up one more H size, it'll clean up to about 70% and going up another H size to a full thousandth of an inch will clean up the threads almost entirely. And like I say, lots of times I'll leave little strips that are uncut that are, you know, a tenth of an inch wide all the way down the threads. And I don't care about that. All we want to do is make the barrel go straight into the receiver. Uh, basically, uh, the face of the receiver is also recut. Uh, you simply slide it on a mandrel, lock it in, put it between centers, run it on the machine, and take a facing cut off the face. But facing it's irrelevant if you don't get the threads close. And another thing a lot of people don't consider is that the threads on your barrel and the threads on your receiver have to be a, a dead close fit, almost a class four. Uh, to keep the barrel lined up. If you've got any wobble in your threads, if you screw the receiver on to the point where it uh, it still has a, a lot of click when you try to uh, twist the two together, uh, the threads aren't going to line up properly. It's not going to be square. It's going to cock off to one side every time. You can't rely on the shoulder to square it up because it won't. The threads will sit cockeyed and you won't get true run out when you try to run the barrel and the receiver together. It'll always be way off, usually 15, 20 thousandths of an inch at, uh, say, 10 inches from the receiver face. And that's about it.